from the studio that brings you all the Transformers movies. Before they died, my parents told Jai Courtney narration. Also Jai Courtney. The Golden Gate Bridge isn't being attacked by primates, supervillains, or Godzillas in this scene. On August 29th, 1997. Somehow, history ignored what happened in the other Terminator movies and just settled back on August 29th, 1997 as Judgment Day again. At this point, the Terminator franchise is in such a time paradox that Biff Tannen married Hermione Granger in Stephen King's best-selling novel, Rose Matter and the Goblet of Firestarters. It decided all humanity was a threat to its existence. Why? Humanity is no threat to the machines? The Matrix knew this? Why did the Skynet? They could have just used humans for cheap slave labor and <laughs> Golden Gate Bridge gets destroyed by something cliche. And yes, I did just sin both sides of that thing. So? Or worse captured and put into camps for extermination. Efficient machines capture humans first, and then put them in a camp where they'll eventually be killed, instead of just killing them on the spot and moving on as a true machine would do. You know what would have been more awesome than this? A Terminator. Then, someone waiting to save a small child from a Terminator in a sewer busted in to save the day. And then one man found me. This movie has spent its first five minutes on everyone already knows. He's gonna lead us to crush Skynet. This narration is still going on after five and a half minutes. All these assholes and they're gonna send just one of them. Couldn't the other hundred at least guard the time machine? Clearly outmatched resistance will still have soldiers after all this sh Movie saves money by employing 1984 Arnold Schwarzenegger at his bargain basement price at the time. Filled. It'll rip apart anything not encased in living tissue. It's a weird plot convenience, just roll with it. Also, they've figured everything out about this time machine except sending Kyle back a week early to prepare for the arrival of the T-800 and blow his ass away before this even starts. And yes, we realize that John probably won't be born because Kyle won't be able to use the intense experience to bang Sarah later. But who needs John Connor then, besides Edward Furlong? Kyle's masturbatory fodder just happens to fall in front of a person his sperm made. She's a waitress. What? Oh. <laughs> Never mind. It would take forever to explain there was this magical place where you ordered food and some underpaid person brought it to you. I mean, even when I tell her who I am, she's not going to believe me. Tell her this. Thank you, Sarah, for your courage during the dark years. This bullshit was told to Sarah after she already started believing the story. How the f was this going to prove anything? Movie attempts a callback to the first movie and fails internal logic. There is no fate but that which we make for ourselves. Says the fifth movie in a franchise utterly dependent on the future repeating itself. This unexpected camera zoom on an unexpected Doctor Who actor completely betrays his villainy. You didn't think it would be that easy, did you? The whole movie to this point is played as a true mini prequel to the first Terminator. But now all of a sudden it's gonna make like things in that movie didn't even happen. How that's possible is the miracle of Terminator Genesis. Also, this is the fucking guy that attacks John. But why not a hell of a lot sooner? Why does he allow Kyle to go back in time before he makes his move? Remember. Genesis is Skynet. Convenient alternate timeline memories are convenient. Movie stupidly thinks the only reason audiences haven't taken to Jai Courtney yet is because they haven't seen him naked enough. Discount Bill Paxton. You won't be needing any clothes. How did the older Terminator from the fractured timeline know that the new young Terminator from the secondary timeline would show up here now? Hey, remember in The Running Man when Arnold fought Jesse Ventura and it was all fake digital simulation? Yeah, I'm remembering that right now for some reason. Seems like this could have been done 10 minutes ago. Also, this renders the fight between young and old Arnie completely pointless. What day is it? What year? You should know the date, dude. They told you that shit before you left. In the first movie, that shit made sense. In this one, it does not. Also, why did this new Terminator act like a normal, afraid of guns person this whole time, instead of simply just killing Kyle before? Even though all the events of the original timeline are changed, Kyle still runs into this store and gets the same damn clothes from the first movie. If you know where this asshole is, why not block the fucking exit? I mean, is there any reason for this thing to hide? What is it afraid of? Is there some part of this confusing timeline where Sarah and the Terminator knew that Kyle stopped inside this very department store to pick up clothes at this very time? I could just go on a rant about how this is impossible, but instead, I'll just ding it. Come with me if you want to live! Of all the gin joints in all the towns and all the world, she walks into mine. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. I see dead people. From the Terminator that was sent back to kill me, I know, but we already took care of him. Me, is she stupid? Kyle has no idea what's going on, but she decides to reveal a good Terminator to him before he even knows such a thing exists. Hence, an unnecessary action scene. Well, Kyle's knocked out for a second, so time for his bull vision like he's Harry Potter looking for horcruxes. How that liquid metal thing know where to intercept me? No amount of John Connor turned into an evil robot and set this new timeline into motion information is gonna explain that. Yeah, programmed by who? Huh? Who sent him back? Those files have been erased. Oh, that's convenient. Hey, that's my line. We can stop Judgment Day from happening. Ever. Were not for Game of Thrones, I'd be forced to conclude this girl's acting is generally terrible. I'm not sure why the T-1000 needs headlights to see the road, but he just gave away his position. And why he didn't take a route way smarter than this is beyond me. We can't stay here, it'll find us. That's the idea. How? In Terminator 2, the T-1000 couldn't find sh its own. It had to go to different places based on the probability that they were there. It definitely wouldn't have been able to figure out, oh, random factory outside LA, just cause. You said it happened because the past was altered. How? 
Does that matter? Um, kinda. Apparently T-1000 goo can revive an older model T-800 because reasons. This Terminator is terrible at terminating. Come on, this stupid thing was definitely melted. And even if it wasn't, how does it have enough liquid metal to carry on like this? This is the movie's second time machine, but it won't be the last. How can he be remembering two timelines? It is possible if he were exposed to a nexus point in the time flow. Terminator Genesis tries to out-jargon Tomorrowland, and I think it's working. Also, I'm fine with him remembering two timelines. I'm just trying to figure out why he only has that one memory. And why does the memory only tell him that he can stop Skynet, not what he actually did to stop Skynet? If John Connor were to be killed or compromised, it could result in the ability to remember both pasts. Why does John Connor hold the key to remembering two f***ing timelines? You just went through a bunch of gobbledygook about a nexus point and the time flow. That should be independent of John's fate. You blow out the hell up. Yes, Jesus, has she not seen the other four films? I guess this kind of nudity is supposed to arouse my shadow puppets. You needed the CPU from the future to make it run. That's the only thing they needed from the future to build a goddamn time machine? That's amazing. This is where the movie should have taken a left turn and become a mostly silent Wall-E style exploration of what Pops does for all these years while waiting until 2017. He could get a dog, watch Jeopardy, maybe even make a Tinder profile. These billboards counting down until Genesis make me wonder why they didn't choose to get here several days ahead of the event to give themselves more time to stop it, as opposed to 35 hours from the end of the world. It took five movies for the time machine to finally drop its travelers into a dangerous how the f*** did they survive this situation. How the f*** did they survive this? These cops got here way too fast. They literally had to be part of this pile up to be here this quickly. I'd be surprised if any witnesses have even had time to dial 911. I was just looking at her in the, uh, and then the cabin exploded. So, just like every other one of their attempted kills, they did something completely immaterial to their goal, announced their presence, and failed because of it again. It wasn't water coming up from below, it was liquid metal. And it still couldn't kill you? I just remember you taking my hand and, and and saying those words. And it takes nine minutes of screen time, about an hour of assumed movie time, and literally 33 years for Kyle to finally tell Sarah how he knew that shit. A young girl and her Terminator is a way better movie than this one. Hell, it could have been great. I guess we'll have to wait for the TV series. Or watch The Professional. Like if Pops wanted me dead, I'd be dead. This is what they do, all right? God damn it, this is one of those moments in movies where it makes zero sense for somebody to be untrusting of what they see before their very eyes. Does Kyle actually think the Terminator is playing a long con game by not killing Sarah immediately? Just because you two don't get along. This they don't get along narrative has virtually no roots in the reality we've seen so far. One early misunderstanding and a snide comment from Pops equals not getting along? They've known each other for like three hours. Genesis does everything. My phone will link to my tablet, will link to my computer. How is this any different from what current gadgets and teenagers are capable of? Oh, sh Terminators are coming, everybody! He hasn't aged. Not a bit since I saw him in 1984. Her too. You saw her from the counter you were hiding behind? In movies, law enforcement always seem to allow two people to run at each other in what is a clear tactic to escape. And don't think me holding on to you naked meant anything because it, you know, did not. I figured it out. This movie was written by James Cameron's eight-year-old niece. How'd you end up in 2017? Oh, the same as you, Dad. John, who has never once referred to Kyle as his dad, casually calls him Dad, like they've had that kind of relationship before. And don't give me that, he's a Terminator now, so that's why bull either. Okay, so Pops was proved right about shooting John. Why is he standing around letting the guy talk? Why aren't they running? Why isn't he shooting? Goddamn time-traveling robots covering up their goddamn tracks. I knew it. You know, we rarely take a sin off for a movie this bad, but J.K. Simmons in that line is good enough to take one off. See, I'm not machine. Not man. I'm machine man Skynet realized the one reason it always lost. Me. You mean it was their plan all along to turn John into a Terminator? That renders all the other stuff we've seen in franchise history moot. Of course, I'm still wondering if Skynet has a collection of Terminator Blu-rays in their offices and they're basing their whole plan around those. I was sent to 2014 to safeguard Skynet's creation in this time. But nobody else, because sending one guy has always worked for Skynet in every possible instance. I'm ready for movies to find a new wow technology and move on from nanobot. It's no longer even a little bit impressive or interesting. Also, this movie just made John Connor the villain and is actually proud of itself for that. Without us, you're never born. Says who? Says everybody. Dismissing the fact that everything was super changed when a Terminator was sent back to 1973 instead of 1984 and a successful Kyle Sarah mating probably wouldn't result in John Connor anymore. How are you even here right now since the entire timeline was changed? This type of threat from heroes in movies facing adversaries who can't be killed by normal guns has hit critical mass. What does she hope to do with this thing? Tickle him? Yes. Why isn't Kyle running? That thing won't hold him for long. It won't? It's been doing nothing but holding him so far, and you just cranked up the power by, like, a lot. Wow, look at that, it didn't hold him for long. Body was replaced on a cellular level. 
Gotta love how they gave all the most difficult words to say in the script to the one guy who would sound the most ridiculous saying them. And even he can't decipher some of the enhanced code you've integrated into Genesis. I just know it works. Movie says John put coding into Skynet that these guys don't understand, which means Skynet invented itself. Which sort of fits, I guess, in a franchise where Kyle Reese was sent back in time by his son before he fathered him. You get a time machine, and you get a time machine, and you get- We're years away from making this thing work. Let's talk about Skynet's plan. Their idea is, let's have Judgment Day with John as our quarterback rather than our enemy. They could have just as easily sent more Terminators back in time to kill Sarah or John and prevented the Resistance from sending their own people back. Or even found a way to cover up the exact date they went back. Skynet allowed Kyle to go back in time despite being there in the room to prevent it, leaving the possibility of another John being born and still being able to lead the Resistance against his Terminator self. But this movie pissed on time travel and is making it sound like Kyle and Sarah don't even need to f*** anymore for John to exist. Cyberdyne will revolutionize technology with the ultimate killer app. Dear Hollywood, stop making apps a main component of action movies. Our pre-orders as of this afternoon have reached 1 billion users. That's laughably impossible. This is 2017, a year and a half from f***ing now. And we've heard so much about amazing apps, we're desensitized. Even if you somehow sold this app as truly greater than any other app in history ever, one billion people are not pre-ordering that. I don't care if it promises blowjobs and candy. 30 years, you had one place to be. Where the hell were you? Stuck in traffic. Jokes about traffic being bad are super fresh. Also, bullshit. This motherfucker would have been there weeks ahead of time just to over-prepare. But nice joke, dicks. Ammo loading pissing contest. Also, Pops had like 33 years to do this, right? Now I'm even more interested in what he did with his time. Our strategy did not account for John Connor. Which is why we should have given ourselves more time, but You die, that's what happens. Yeah, back in 1984 when the old timeline was still intact. Not one smidgen of thought went into the time travel of this movie. You wanna tell me how that conversation's supposed to start? Yeah, it's pretty easy. Those events can't happen that way anymore, so it's totally moot. Also, I guess Pops told Sarah what would happen in the future, but that means he was sent from a timeline that acknowledges Kyle Reese was the father of John Connor. Only John could have given him that knowledge, but we don't even know at what precise point he turned evil. How many different times did John lead the Resistance to a victory over Skynet, leading to time travel and repeating the whole cycle again? Was the time travel we saw at the beginning of this movie like the fifth time that happened, or the first? This is like Groundhog Day Edge of Tomorrow sh only they never tell you you're in that type of movie. Until Skynet rules this world. Rule this. Dear Hollywood, please stop having action heroes say some word the antagonist just said this before firing a weapon. Wow, stealing a school bus is bad enough, but you're stranding 60 children at the scene of an evil Terminator attack while the evil Terminator is still there. You're made up of nanobots. Why don't you just cloud your way down there? Why do you need to ride anything? F you, movie. F you and you f your ass face. Oh, what? John sensed Arnie was standing on this very spot in the bus? You know, the cops just got confirmation they were on the Golden Gate Bridge a minute or so ago. How did they set this up so fast? What are you doing? You and your f***ing handgun can't do anything to him even if he is down there. Yep, they survived this. Well, apes and mutants and Godzillas aren't destroying this bridge, but Terminators are, so let's just call it the horribly unoriginal cliche that it is and move on. That's not how physics works. Let's go, get out! And the f***ing sun went down while these cops took forever to cuff these dicks and put them in police cars, apparently. It was broad f***ing daylight, assholes. Bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? The choice to play bad boys and go on this humorous lineup montage 25 minutes before the movie is supposed to end. Also, fun fact, Jai Courtney is 6'1 and Amelia Clark is 5'2, so both of them got two free inches from this generous screenwriter. But Arnold, being Arnold, got four inches. He kinda looks like... you, Dad. They're here, sir. He does not. Straight line. You just go, and you don't look back. But first, you'll have to navigate some stairs, find your car, go back home. Psh, just forget I told you this until you're an adult and you need something to convince me to come to 2017 instead of 1997. Nice to see you. How did you know exactly where the- Oh, f***ing forget it. This would be a good time to disable the helicopter you decide not to use. Shoot a propeller or something. F Why did it take John so long to get here? He fell in the water and they got arrested and then interrogated. So the timing of this is some convenient bull****. Do helicopters work like this? F***ing what? They just left him standing on the roof of that building and 20 seconds later he's not only taken off in that other chopper but defied the laws of physics to catch up with them? I wonder, is there a chance this movie is an elaborate psychology experiment to see how much bullshit people will put up with? Hey, let's shoot this big gas truck. I'm pretty sure there's no way innocent people are going to die from this maneuver. Did he forget his new directives? He's getting on us! That's what you get for choosing the slow helicopter. I'll be back. You f***ing dicks have no idea what fans of the Terminator franchise actually like about the films, do you? Terminator Velocity. False alarm. Does it even matter that John reports a false alarm when there should have been hundreds of witnesses to the flaming wreckage that just fell from the sky a minute ago? Somehow taking out John's helicopter caused the heroes to arrive at the destination after John Connor did. Of course, that's only because they managed to take him out literally on the front porch of the place they were going to. I know who you are. Discount that little girl from Resident Evil Apocalypse. Follow me. By all means, don't do anything that might keep John from getting out of this mess. 
You really think you can't get out of this? I was able to infiltrate the work crews in this facility. Amazingly, I didn't set up charges years ago that I could use to blow this place up anytime I wanted. Only the magnetic quantum field is complete. You mean John, who is basically Skynet from the future, couldn't figure out how to make the time travel machine work yet? That's not how security works. I realize there's electricity involved, but it seems like this stake thing has pinned him in place for way too long, considering how powerful he is and I was able to program your voice and handprint into the biometric security system. Skynet is already pretty much self-aware at this point. They allowed this Terminator to program Sarah's voice and handprint without raising any red flags. What about that? Is it dangerous? This reminds me that earlier the T-1000 was able to revive a T-800 with some of its liquid metal DNA. That might have been a cool idea to explore. Alas, it was just a reason to make one scene possibly more exciting and to ex machina Arnie back to life at the end. If he can do this, then why did he have to do this to get out of the helicopter blade situation? Forty-some-year-old T-800 will now go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Terminator so advanced it might as well be Megatron from Transformers Age of Extinction. You know, in hindsight, John Connor really turned out to be a shitty Terminator. Jesus, guy, just shoot all the projectors already. The John Connor Terminator is a video game boss that you've defeated twice in the game already, but when you meet him for the final battle, suddenly has new attacks he didn't use before. You are nothing but a relic from a deleted timeline. We don't know exactly which timeline yet, but maybe the sequels. How does John not hear this shit? It's in the same room! How many shells does that fucking thing hold? Anyone who loves me, they die. Anyone who loves me, they die, cliche. It's not a Terminator movie unless somebody's fixing a motorcycle. Are they approaching him without even consulting his parents? I like her. Say, you wouldn't have a picture of her somewhere, would you? This touching scene of Kyle on Kyle dialogue is brought to you by how the f*** are Kyle and Pops even still here? They destroyed Skynet, which means neither of them was ever sent. Oh, f*** it. Just get to the credits already, will you? It was over. I hope so, but I bet not. A one thing we know for sure. The future is not set. Except that it is. Every one of these movies tells me the future is not set, only to have its sequel tell me it is. I'm done with you, Terminator movies. I'm cutting you off. You're dead to me. Bullshit and credit sequence sets up a sequel that no one who sees this movie will want. Also, what Avengers comic book am I going to need to read to figure out what this is? Have you tried turning it off and on again? It is true what many of you have heard. The machines have gathered an army, and as I speak, that army is drawing nearer to our home. Now get up. Energize. I can't let you do this. You lost your fing mind, Larry. We have been friends. And you respect my dad, and I respect you, but I will put and bullets right through your heart. You put that fucking gun down now. <sighs> Anthony Perkins, psycho. I won't let them hurt you. When you lie to me, I hurt you. His constituent parts could not have survived the blast. Well, that means there's only one thing left to do.